what should I talk about today that I want to happen? What do I want to happen today? I don't know, man. Everything I've been talking about that I said I'm going to keep talking about has been happening. So, what do I want? I know what I want. I want MindMed and I want Lightlink to go up, to keep going up, and I want gold and silver to kind of just relax, maybe go down a little bit, so I can swoop in for those good prices. That's what I want to happen. We'll see if it can happen. But I'm gonna keep talking about it, so hopefully it happens. Anyways guys, what's going on? This is Aaron from Departures Capital, and welcome to the video. In this video, we're talking all about the moves in the markets, specifically my two favorite stocks, and we do have news for both, more specifically news for MindMed, but we'll also be talking about a little piece of news that came out for Lightlink. It was another strong day for both. Very happy about that. We did see the gold and silver sector pull back just a little bit. We'll be talking about gold and silver, and I've got my eyes on that sector like crazy, but um, I don't think the time is right just yet. Um, I'm going to keep talking about this because this self-fulfilling prophecy somehow has been unfolding and it's been, you know, now it's going my way. I just kind of stuck with the trades that I wanted to make and stick with and everything's going good so far. So can't really complain, guys. Congratulations to all the psychedelic investors, not just MindMed shareholders, Field Trip Health, Numinous Wellness, a lot of psychedelic stocks ran today. So it's awesome. I was talking about this yesterday, how I kind of felt like it was time for, you know, maybe the Redditors or the investors to rotate into the psychedelic sector because we saw the MJ stocks run. Now we're seeing the psychedelic stocks run. Hopefully that rally can be sustainable. I think that we do need, you know, the next leg higher. It was just a matter of time. So I'm happy to see that unfolding. We'll be keeping our eyes on it over the next couple of days to see if it holds on to its gains. Hopefully it wasn't just, you know, a pop higher and then uh, you know a quick trade, but that's kind of been the tone of the markets these couple these past couple of weeks ever since Reddit, GameStop, all that stuff. But anyways, we'll get into this video. These are your market minutes. This is your daily recap, but we will be talking very much about my two favorite companies, and I'm sure you guys can guess those, what those companies are, but if not, uh, make sure to stay tuned. Either way, stay tuned to the end of this video. And then last but not least, I do have to say kindly explode that like button. It takes just one second of your time. And it helps my videos so, so very much, along with catching that subscribe button and hitting the market bell for notifications on future videos if you do appreciate my content. The company introductions, of course, sponsored. Any interviews, which are mostly sponsored. And then my unsponsored daily recap where I just basically talk about the stocks that I like. So the first thing I did want to mention, and I did want to give this company... A shout out, the Real Luck Group or Luck Box. We did drop two videos recently on it and um, a really interesting article came out. So IEM, Katoa is expected to drive significant uptick in esports betting. Esports betting operator Luck Box said the Katoa major has traditionally led to an increase in betting action while fans will not be allowed at the Spodek Arena in Poland due to ongoing global illness restrictions. The company is confident the return of the elite competition after a difficult 2020 for the esports industry will generate increased interest in the $400,000 event. So just some interesting news. This was actually posted in routers. So I just wanted to give Luckbox a quick shout out. And the stock has been doing very well recently getting over a dollar. So it's been on a nice run. Um, like I said, we did drop those two videos about the company recently. So let's get into comment of the day, guys. One of our awesome subscribers, Jack Hall, pointed out to me that there is now a fake Departures Capital account Another great investment tip with which you can never go wrong with is trading with my administrative, Robert Craig, his availability. If you guys ever see a number on YouTube, first off, I would never post my number on YouTube. You know, I, I simply just don't want people to have my number, especially a WhatsApp number. So please ignore any comments that look like Departures Capital. We're going to click on this. You know, it, it, it's obviously a fake channel. You can see someone has just created this fake channel to spam stuff. And we're going to now hide that user from the channel. So hopefully, you know, their posts will never come up again. But if you guys ever see anything like that, first off, I'll never ask you for your number. I'll never give out my number unless you email contact at departurescapital.com for some specific reason. I probably still won't give out my number unless, you know, you're a client and you want to work with me. But um, for the most part, yes, be careful. 
Um, I'll never ask you for your number. I'll never ask you for your WhatsApp or, and obviously click on the comment. Like it, it's pretty easy. You just click on the channel and if it, it goes back to Departures Capital, then it, you know, it's probably real. And if it goes to this fake channel that someone's created, then it's obviously fake. So keep that in mind. So let's get into comment of the day, guys. There's been a ton of comments. Uh, the first comment, Werner bro, when is MindMed on NASDAQ? Uh, I wish I knew, man. I wish I knew. This is a question that's been asked many, 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 many times. Hemp Fusion Wellness, um, what about them? We've got an interview dropping on, I believe it is next Tuesday, so that will be exciting. Because of you, I bought Lightling at 15 cents before the split, and now it's way up. Thanks, man. And see, here we go. More of these annoying comments. I guess, you know, this guy has just been going on all of these posts. So hopefully he doesn't make any more comments after we hit him from the channel. Mike Clement, Cloud is rolling along. I want to win MindMed merch. Yes, that's really awesome. Yes, I'm enjoying that Sundial explosion. Fire another good stock that hasn't exploded yet. So JP wrote, LVX opened my portfolio in there. It was this morning. I can see the multiple positions now. It will kick in with a staggered time frames. Also planning on holding for the long run with these spin codes. I'm in the same boat there. K, okay, hey, but I asked you ACDC long time ago at three cents. You skipped me like I was a schmuck. And um, if you only knew how many comments I get for people requesting stocks, like if you take that personally, I, I don't know what else to say. Man, it's obviously not something personal. You know, comment on our community tab and, and request it, and I, I might get a chance to cover it. I appreciate every single one of your comments, guys. I just simply don't have the time in a day to, first off, answer every single one of them, and then on top of that, take a look at every single stock. So that's why I've made this, and I do apologize. I didn't get a chance to record that video for Departure Stocks, but I will do that today, and it will be on the channel today. And um, simply go to our community tab, Take a look at which stocks you want me to feature on tomorrow's video. Drop tickers below. We already have 21 comments. So I already have a lot of tickers that I can cover. I'll do kind of like a lightning round. We'll look at their website, look at their business model quickly. Just give my opinion on the company. And uh, once again, that's just my opinion, not financial advice. And if I say anything negative, you know, call me out on it in the comments below on that video. And I'm also going to add ACDC requested by K just to, you know, just to show some love, man, it's nothing personal. So anyways, let's get into the actual markets and see what the heck is going on on Wall Street. So Dow closes flat to end near record highs as bulls take a breather, not in the psychedelic sector. The Dow closed just below the flat line Thursday, but remained close to record highs as investors weighed weakness in energy against strength in technology and growing optimism for another injection of stimulus to support recovery. So. I do see the stimulus announcement having a little bit of an effect on the precious metals, potentially getting gold back above 1850. Um, depending on what happens tomorrow, I may take a small percentage off the table in those growth sectors, probably not for Lightlink, but potentially in the psychedelic sector, and start to accumulate some of my favorite gold and silver stocks. Now, there's way too many for me to, you know, be able to buy them all. You know, I'm going to need capital from somewhere but um, looking to potentially position myself going into the weekend maybe load up on a couple gold and silver stocks but um, I will have to do some thinking tonight about that that's just one of my thoughts I think we will have more time I think stimulus will come eventually and, and gold and silver being such an undervalued trade right now in my opinion may get some love so that but once again I don't think that the next leg up is gonna start just yet but then again you know, that's the thing with gold and silver. When it happens, it happens. And most people get left in the dust. I see this gold pattern, you know, it, it, it's obviously taken a long time, but I still really like a lot of these gold and silver companies. So silver actually closed down three cents. Gold closed down $16 per ounce. So this makes sense to me, this move. Um, gold, safe haven. Investors were buying up a lot of the growth sectors and that's kind of what's been happening. This rotation from growth sector to growth sector, we've got you know, these undervalued, unloved stocks like GME, AMC, and then MJ stocks, and now psychedelic stocks, and what's next? Maybe back to EV stocks, or it's hard to say. It's a funny environment. Investors change sectors like they change their shirts. Um, maybe a little bit, maybe that's a bad comparison because I feel like people don't change as much 
nowadays everyone's staying at home but um that's my thoughts on gold i do have a few quick articles and we'll talk about my favorite two companies the news for mindred the news for lightlink and that will be it for the video so silver demand to hit eight year highs but what about prices the silver institute weighs in against an improving macroeconomic backdrop the main segment of silver demand are expected to rise this year Total demand is expected to reach 1.025 billion ounces, rising 11% and marking an eight-year high. Physical investment alone is projected to reach a six-year high of 257 million ounces on more demand. For silver coins and bars, silver jewelry demand is looking to recover but will remain below pre-global illness levels. So industrial demand is forecast to rise to a four-year high of 510 million ounces, 9% higher than 2020. So, I mean, every sign is there, guys. You know dwindling supply not as not fantastic production and a uh, very much increasing demand so we'll see how long they can suppress it for i'm very bullish on silver so we'll just leave it at that bullion coin demand off the charts why isn't it gold why isn't gold moving it happened for the first time under my tenure what we found out was that a couple of things had come together one was the financial crisis and the demand for both gold and silver bullion coins skyrocketed and our problem was getting our supply chain to catch up to demand. The process is very specialized and some fabricators can only produce so much capacity. Yet despite the high demand gold prices are still consolidating and cannot break 1850 an ounce level on a sustained basis. Moy says that the 2008 financial crisis offers some clues as to why gold has been stalling. So the last time demand was this high was during the financial crisis. People were panicking and buying gold and prices were shooting up. Then the government started injecting both fiscal and monetary stimulus and you saw gold correct down maybe 20, 30 percent. And then over the next three years, gold began to climb until it set a new record high of 1925 and 2011. Afterwards, gold didn't decline until it became clear that the economic recovery was going to be slow, which eliminated the uncertainty. The Fed also had the time to mop up all the excess li liquidity before it caused inflation. If you follow the same pattern as during the financial crisis, watch for gold prices to climb over the next couple of years until the economic uncertainty and fear of inflation subside. I don't see a price target or I haven't read that much into it, but um, like I said, long term for me. It's like now I'm gold starting to look like a couple year trade for me. But that's okay because you know I want to now look at the large cap gold producers as future dividend stocks. You know, dividend stocks that have the potential to grow their dividend and also increase shareholder value simply just by how much cash that they're making. So that's kind of how I'm looking at it. And I do want to eventually take some out of you know these riskier growth sectors and looking at the dividend sector, there's a lot of companies that the valuations look kind of lofty compared to a gold producer that's paying over 2% potentially. And prices, like share prices are down. The dividend will probably be raised. So we're in an interesting time right now. I really do feel like uh, gold producers, like the large cap gold producers, will be the dividend rock stars of the next five years just for the fact that they're going to make so much cash. And they're either going to acquire more, more gold projects, which I do feel like they will. So it'll drive valuations in the small cap sector via M&A activity. But also, I feel like they'll be able to raise those dividends to attract longer term shareholders and actually consistently be able to raise those dividends. But that's just speculation, guys. We'll see what happens. Let's take a look at some of our favorite stocks now. So Field Trip Health. Holy smokes, guys. What a run this thing had today. I saw it up at one point to almost $10 per share, up $50, up 50%. What happened? Field Trip Health has been absolutely flying, um, outperforming MindMed by a long shot. What I think is happening is the fact that it's just a low volume stock, not to mention um, a much smaller market cap, and it takes a lot less to move the company, although I do believe in what they're doing, very interesting company, very interesting technology. Um, owned it at one point, should have owned it, should have bought a lot when it was at three bucks. Obviously, that's hindsight. But uh, great day for Field Trip Health. Now let's take a look at Numinous Wellness up to a dollar seventy six, up twenty one cents, thirteen point five percent. We got a very nice, strong close today for Lightlink, and this comes after the stock ran seventy percent already this week. We did see a bit of a pullback yesterday, which on that pullback I did add 
quite a substantial amount of shares once again in the low 50s and here we are closing at 62 cents so just one quick piece of news it's nothing crazy but lightning technologies to change company name to tech x technologies a company focused in emerging technologies across across growth sectors including crypto blockchain ai and cloud technologies is pleased to announce its intention to change the name to tech x technologies so complete rebranding of the company they're getting into a lot of exciting things I interviewed their CEO, so we'll have that out eventually. And uh, also interviewed the CEO of Catalex, which is the exchange that they announced that they are going to be, well, as a letter of intent, they intend to acquire 19% of that exchange. So we got that. Um, yeah, exciting times for Lightlink. Um, if they can do one great company to compare Lightlink to, I would say is Voyager Digital. Obviously, Voyager Digital is at a different stage in the game here. They're now worth $2.18 billion. But the stock did run from $0.17 cents to $21. So that is just a killer run. If Lightning can do half that, I'll be uh, happy. But right now, we're at a $42.75 million market cap. And even after these substantial gains, I mean, it's still under 50 million. It's not even 50 million. It's not even 100 million. We see crazy moves in these markets, especially in the crypto space. And I'm just excited for to see what this company can do because uh, they're clearly trying. They're, they're doing a lot of stuff. They're rebranding and um, it should be an exciting year. So now let's take a look at the charts for MindMed. And I wanted to talk about one funny thing, guys. So I posted this on Reddit. If you are part of the MindMed Reddit community, don't hate. But I said, meme request. Can someone please make a meme of these weak closes that always happen? You guys know I'm more bullish on MindMed than the Pampaloa and Serio Festival, which is the Running with the Bulls Festival. But watching more than half of the games dissolve into the closes is annoying. We all know this happens quite often. And it's not just a MindMed specific thing. I'm just being a little bit of a troll, kind of joking around. And I hope you guys don't take offense to this. But uh, this is my meme, MindMed into the close. It's always like a ooh, up and down. Although I posted this too soon because um, as soon as I posted it, you know, um, MindMed started to run. So we actually did get a close of $4.94, just below $5. We got like, we got like a 22 cent recovery in the last like 30 minutes of trade. So I was very happy about that. And I'm going to complain about the things I want to complain about. And I'm going to talk about the things that I want to happen. Because so far, so good. We're seeing MindMed and Lightlink run. We're seeing gold and silver kind of go sideways. And um, MindMed had a decent close. So I'm just going to keep doing whatever the heck I'm doing. And then, oh yeah, and the last thing I forgot to say, guys, was the news for MindMed. What are we doing here? MindMed signs partnership with Swiss psychedelic drug discovery startup MindShift Compounds AG, expands development pipeline, and intellectual property portfolio with next gen psychedelic and empathogenic compounds. So I would like to read what MindShift CEO, Dr. Felix Lustenberger said, our innovative psychedelic drug discovery platform based in Switzerland is pioneering next gen psychedelic compounds that complement in a synergistic pipeline approach. The later stage development work underway at MindMed. The compounds we are working on are typically derivatives or analogs of known substances with psychedelic properties such as can't say that word or those other words and are therefore enhanced versions of both the established and classic psychedelic compounds such as mescaline, psilocybin, DMT, and all of the other compounds. These novel chemical structures, for example, MDMA and LSD-like compounds are designed and synthesized psychoactive properties and duration of effects profiles with potential added therapeutic benefits. So once again, MindMed working on their long-term pipeline. It's obviously exciting news for the company. Um, I'm sure they have more news on the way. I'm being patient with MindMed. I, you know, this I think is, when it comes to MindMed, you have to have a long-term horizon for this company. I mean, sure, the stock could double from here. It could double before it goes onto the NASDAQ. It could go up and down like crazy. I'm sure it will follow the sector. But at the end of the day, I really think that the gains to be made on MindMed are going to be when their clinical trials, when, the, when, when we get the outcome of their clinical trials. That's why I will always hold 
a significant portion of mine because I just want to see what happens. And of course, if they go well, I think that this company will be worth billions and billions of dollars. But that's just my speculation. So for what they're trying to accomplish, I want to see it unfold one way or another. I've been with this company and was literally at their IPO. So it's exciting covering the news, covering the moves. But at the end of the day, you know, this is a long term play for me personally. So we'll see what happens. And the last thing I will say in this video, um, it's my gold and silver mining watch list. I still need to add uh, the mid tier gold producers, but for the most part, it was a red day, except for Arcana, Arizona silver and AIA gold and silver. Biggest decliners, Termalina Metals, Fosterville South, Silver Bear Resources, Brixton Metals. A lot of these companies I cannot wait to buy and uh, I will definitely be buying them. I just want to squeeze out a few more gains for, you know, the sectors that I'm obviously much more invested into. So we'll see what happens for those sectors, guys. All of these stocks are so heavily on my watch list. So we'll see how this plays out, but I'm going to keep putting it out there and hopefully it keeps on happening. But anyways, guys, that's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. Always remember departures, capital and departures stocks are for information, education and and entertainment purposes only don't buy or sell a stock because you heard it on here. Buy or sell a stock because you've done your research, you've done your thorough due diligence, and you're making your own personal investment decisions for yourself. This video is not financial advice. We'll see you guys in our next video.